Yeah. Hey, I'm Matt from Motu. We're at the NAMM Show 2016. We're excited here at the Motu booth to show some new features and enhancements in DP902, which is a few weeks away at this point. So let's click through. Last couple years, Motu has benefited from a couple of great new Electronic Musician Editor's Choice Awards. So this year we've got the whole nine yards, uh, which is basically saying, you know, recognizing us for having, being a little bit ahead of the pack here with Dawes. So we're excited about that award. Uh, here we are in Anaheim, not far from Hollywood, where a lot of the big TV and film scores are produced with Digital Performer and Motu products. So you can see, you know, feature films, Michael Giacchino, Inside Out, Pixar films, and so on and so it's forth. Sort of traditionally being used by a lot of film composers. A lot of film composers, especially here, yeah, very, very prominent and popular here in LA. Of course, widely used on tour, not just Digital Performer for playback, but of course, Motu, AVB, audio interfaces are used in a number of the top tours on the road. So again, we're going to dive in a little bit to uh, DP902. DP9 supports Motu's video hardware, the HDX SDI, so you can send out SDI signals, HDMI, but now we've also added support for third-party video interfaces. So Blackmagic Design, AJA, you can send video, high-def video and audio from third-party video hardware. So that's a new feature in DP902. We've got this cool new plugin now that ships with DP902, uh, which will generate SEMPTY time code. So really convenient. Uh, you can synchronize, which sends it on the timeline. And still frame will basically keep bursting out when you stop. And of course, free wheel will just continuously send out time code. And of course, at any frame rate, HD frame rates and so on. So that's a convenient little feature built into DP902. So now we're going to switch over to some productivity enhancements. So we'll switch over here to DP. Uh, one of the things you'll find right off the bat here in the top of the window is the ability to search. So I come up here and start typing. You know, it'll show me in this particular case oh, right. all the base track parts. filtering. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's so, because so many guys use huge templates in DP, it's so nice to be able to do that. Which brings up another point: in terms of viewing tracks, there's been a lot of work done uh, in regards to that. So, if you go to this new menu here, View, you'll notice that I can show all sorts of different types of tracks: tracks that are empty, tracks that have data, tracks that just have sound bites or record enabled, and so on and so forth. And so, not only can I actually view and show different types of tracks but I'm able to set up what are called track layouts. So let's just look at just the drums and percussion, or maybe you want to look at the keys uh, so and custom bass. Groups. The custom groups. And you'll notice if I go into the commands window in DP, let's go up here to set up commands, and if I type in track, let's scroll down to the bottom, you'll, you'll notice that we have uh, the ability to, to create shortcut key commands uh, for these various layouts. So you'll notice we can set up commands for showing different types of tracks. So not only can we mouse and menu through those, we can set up key bindings and shortcuts for them as well. So that's a nice feature. And speaking of, of selecting tracks, the track selector now works in the actual tracks window. So check this out. I can show different types of track. Of course, option click or command click. Uh, very convenient to have the track selector work in the tracks window. So that's a nice feature. Yeah, good workflow stuff. Cool, exactly, workflow stuff. So, by the way, if I right click on a wave, an audio sound bite, I'm able to now, let me undo that. We're able to now open it up in the waveform editor. So, that's kind of a new quick little feature that we've added. Uh, in the mixing board, we've always had the ability to view the level of the send, but now we're able to pop edit the level. So, I can just say minus 20. So it's a quick little way to pop edit the send values. It's a new feature inside DP. So let's switch back for a moment. And let's just talk about a few things. Uh, so a couple other features that are sort of a little bit farther down the road other than 902 is something kind of a really cool feature that we're, we're getting into now, which is the ability to have hardware inserts in DP9. So this is a little bit beyond 902. So you'll notice here in the mixing board on the inserts, We've now got a plugin that will let you send and return out of your audio interface. You hit the detect button and it, and it sends a ping to calculate the round trip distance and then automatically shifts the audio playback to match its sample accurate. Right, so it'll map the whole playback to be exactly. able to. Exactly. So it's all sample accurate and it compensates for that round trip. And so now you've got hardware inserts. So for your favorite compressor, 1176 EQ, uh, you can now patch it in. So will that work across multiple tracks, multiple inserts? It'll just take the highest figure and align everything Correct, else. exactly. It keeps it all nicely aligned. So also now we've made some great optimizations to Motu's audio engine, which has dramatically reduced latency and audio performance. So for instance, now when you're running at a lower buffer, 
the round trip latency has basically been reduced to the half the amount of level. So it's tighter, it's faster. All this optimization work that's done to the engine itself has made latency lower, half the latency. Is that with all hardware or just with the motor hardware? Uh, with all hardware. So in terms of virtual instrument triggering, the latency has been reduced to half. So that's an important feature. And it's something I want to point out that we're really excited about is called next-gen, pre-gen. So in Digital Performer currently, we have the ability to run in real-time or pre-gen. And now with pre-gen, we're able to basically render and calculate the playback of VIs to make it tremendously more efficient. And I've got an example I want to show you. I'm going to switch over to DP and load this particular chunk. Great, so we've got this very large orchestral cue that I'm playing uh, in this new pre-gen build of DP. And one of the things I want to point out to you is obviously look at all the number of MIDI tracks and virtual instruments. So if we go into the mixing board, I'm running here over 12 contacts, pretty much fully loaded, so over 150 MIDI tracks running. And look at the processor in DP up here at the top. And look at the buffer settings, 64 seconds. So, I mean, staggering increase, a staggering increase in terms of efficiency of running virtual instruments. So again, and these are, these are not light instruments, you know, the Cine samples is excellent sample libraries. And so again, to show 150 plus tracks running at 64 samples per buffer with this new pre-gen technology is impressive. Um, so that's very exciting stuff from, from us. Uh, and of course, I just want to mention that, you know, Cine samples is, a, is an excellent partner with Motu in creating libraries and so many so much of the guys, so many of the guys here in LA use their libraries, the Cine samples stuff. So uh, they're very nice to give us these samples to use for this demonstration. But uh, so that's just kind of a quick overview of DP902 and things to come in terms of hardware inserts, uh, being able to do this new pre-gen technology. Uh, we've got the new time code feature uh, with the plugin, right? Lots of track view capabilities in DP insert sends. Uh, little in productivity enhancements that are going to be free here for users for DP. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Hey there, Matt from Motu. We're at the Motu booth here showing some new enhancements for AVB. Uh, I'm going to take you for our demo very quickly. So over the past year, of course, we released a bunch of new products and the latest is the Stage B16. So you can see a very well-built, sturdy stage box featuring 16 mic preamps with excellent analog, cir analog circuitry. Of course, line outputs that are balanced. Uh, you can see you've got some metering controls. And of course, on the back, you've got a USB connection and as well as AVB. So imagine a 100-meter cable run to a switch to be able to have the stage box on the network. So just uh, to recap, AVB is an audio networking Exactly. Protocol. Audio video bridging is an IEEE spec standard that we've adopted with our new uh, audio interfaces. And so we've got a di lots of different flavors of I.O. And this is our newest stage box that's part of that network. And it's native to OSX, isn't it? It is, correct. So you can plug it in directly Ethernet if you're running 10, 10, 5, or 10, 11. And of course, the ultralight is also relatively new. Uh, ultralight is one of our most popular interfaces, and now it has the AVB capability built into it. So we've updated the converters, the sound quality. Uh, also, this is a 48-channel mixer like the other AVB audio interfaces. Of course, we won a couple of awards over the past couple of years. And on tour, uh, it's becoming the de facto standard. So a lot of the biggest tours, whether it's Beyonce, Usher, uh, the Van Halen guys are using it. Miley is on tour with it. You can see the list kind of goes on and on of various artists now using Motu AVB interfaces. Are they using that for recording the shows or playback? They or? do often. So not only are they for live playback tracks, but for recording the tours and shows, exactly. So just a quick overview of our flagship. This is the 1248. And you can see for preamps and balanced line, line inputs and outputs, uh, SPDIF, light pipe, Thunderbolt, USB, of course, AVB. Just a quick overview of that product. And just a quick matrix of how things like digital mixers, uh, main and auxiliary monitors, wireless headsets, analog wedges, and so on. So you can use them as part of like your monitor setup. Like, exactly. Like as a part, and of course, if it's connected to the network, wireless devices that have browsers can access the mixer settings. So remember that, anything on the network, that's the beauty of ABV, right? So from a, from a laptop, desktop, from an Android, iOS device, I can access the settings once I'm on the network. So of course the sound quality has been phenomenally improved using this ESS Sabre 32 chip. So that basically equates to 120 dB dynamic range, so great analog converter quality. Uh, just a quick shout out to a guy who's a, this Dre, who uses our stuff on tour. 
We just introduced here recently in DP902, which ships in a couple of weeks, the new Sempty plugin. This will be a great way to send timecode over AVP. Just a quick shout uh, demonstration of using the Sempty plugin on an A rig, maybe generating timecode out to a video lighting rig, an AVB switch, or maybe also slating a B rig through this new Sempty plugin. Ah, so in terms of live, you can have redundant systems, which is exactly. always, and I guess because it's all over the network. I mean, Absolutely. that's always been a nightmare, hasn't it? Like running two tools rigs. Exactly. You have to have custom hardware to kind of switch. Right. The it's been a little more complicated with certain. It's been obviously doable, but this makes it simplified, especially over AVB. A couple enhancements I want to actually take a second and shift over here to. At the top of the at the top of the finder, I'm going to switch over to our 112D and bring up the actual uh, device settings. Oh, so it works like HTML5 kind of. This is uh, exactly right. So remember, we're not actually going into a separate app. This is basically uh, a web app going to the IP address of this device on the network. So now, under device settings, you know, I could save my configurations, uh, adjust my input and output levels, and so on. Set up how many AVB streams we're using. And the routing matrix basically lets me take inputs Ooh. to outputs, so it's very, very flexible. And then, of course, the mixing environment. And this is what I want to show you uh, that we're showing at the NAMM show. So if I have up here, and we've got gate, EQ, compression, we've got reverb built into this mixing environment. So that's accessing the DSP on the AVB. Exactly. Right. 48 channels can access this DSP. It's, it's very powerful. So now that I enable these bands for the EQ, I can just simply click here, and a new feature is the ability to have graphical EQ here. And this again is in the browser, right? Yep. Right there, it makes it simple. And then uh, I can do the same for the compressor. So I enable the compressor, I click here, I can get into threshold, ratio. I'm guessing this will work, because uh, it's HTML5, works on, on touch devices, from tablets, that kind it of thing. It absolutely too. does. In fact, there's actually a touch OSC um, sort of document that exists for a person who wants to create layouts for their AVB mixer. So those are a couple of new enhancements here at the show. Excellent. This, fir this is uh, firmware enhancements to AVB. When, when's this going to be? So yeah, the, the, the software mixer updates um, should be uh, available here in the next few weeks. But we've got them here at the show, and I think they're just about ready to go. So yeah, new enhancements for AVB. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Award-winning customer service. Fast, free shipping on most orders. Own the gear of your dreams today.